And I'm gonna ask you first, when you hire people, do you have a compelling story? Do you have a compelling story to share with people about this opportunity? Do you have a story now after you've been here that you can tell people in one minute what this opportunity is all about and where you're going? You know what, I've got a compelling story. I loved to see Lisa when I first started with the company. But I knew, unless I saw 20 people a week, I couldn't see Lisa. I remember one week, Lisa always liked chickens and animals, and she was in college. And I went to these people's house, and I'm sure you guys have been in the house. I'm sitting there going through the presentation, and all of a sudden a rooster comes in and sits up on the couch. I go, you guys got chickens, huh? They go, yeah. I go, oh, my girlfriend loves chickens. She just really likes them. The lady goes, does she have any? And I go, well, no, she's going to college. She goes, well, why don't I give you some chickens? You can take them home. <laughs> she gave me three chickens. <laughs> I left that house with like a, a couple of deals and three chickens. <laughs> and I'm driving. I think I have my little diesel rabbit, and I had these three chickens in the back end. And I thought I had them in the cardboard box pretty good. And the cardboard box opened up. I'm driving down the road, and these chickens are like flying all over my... <laughs> Oh my gosh, but I remember I couldn't show up with those chickens unless I'd seen 20. It was Thursday night and I had to see one more. And I always remember it was 1984 and I decided I got to do a drop by. I got to do a drop by. It's nine o'clock at night. I just got to get there. I got to do a drop by. And I went to these people's house and I always remember their name because it was Charles and Diana. I don't remember their last name. And I knock on the door. I said, hi, I'm Rick Altig with American Income. Hey, I've been wondering when you guys were gonna come out here. I was like shocked, right? I never could get a hold of this person. He goes, I've been wondering when you were gonna come out here. We've had like four people call. They always say they're gonna come and they never show up. And we've been waiting for you to come out here because we wanna buy a policy. Well, I enrolled Charles and Diana. I had the chickens in the car. I drove back to, the, Lisa lived on Capitol Hill, Hill here in Seattle in a big house that she rented a room. I remember her landlord was a little upset when I brought the chickens in. <laughs> but I got a call about a year later. Charles worked at the meat packing plant. And Charles, white coat that they wear, those guys at the meat packing plant. He was walking by the, the sausage machine and he went in to get something out of, there was some kind of mechanical problem and he went in and it grabbed his coat and pulled him through the machine. pulled him so bad that they, they could not even recover him. They could really only recover his coat. And you think about that, if I hadn't gone to that one other house, I had three chickens in my car. I could have gone home really easy. But if I didn't have that responsibility inside my heart, that I was gonna see 20 people no matter what, and I really was just thinking about myself and my career, the story's worse than that, because I didn't hear about it. You know, a lot of times we don't hear about our claims. And I happened to be in the office, and Diana called. She goes, Rick, you're not going to believe it. Charles was killed at work. They're both young, just expecting their first baby. And she goes, remember that check we wrote you for $40? She goes, I need to make a claim on that $1,000 policy. I'm like... What? She goes, you know, the $1,000 policy, we need to make a claim on the $1,000 policy that we got from you. And I go, well, wait, you have a policy. She goes, I know we have the $1,000 policy. And we started talking and found out that Charles had never changed his beneficiary at the union. He'd left his parents down as the beneficiary on his $5,000 insurance policy through the union. 
And even though Diana was only expecting or was expecting their first baby, his own parents said to her, you know what, Charles must have meant for us to have this. We're not going to let you have the $5,000. So Rick, I'm calling. I really need that $1,000. How fast, how fast can I get it? I said, well, Diana, hang on a second. I think there's more here because you actually enrolled in the Hour Power program. And I went through her coverage. It was just one week later when I, and they used to do it this way, I got to deliver a check for the whole life. I got to deliver a check for the monthly income. I got to deliver a check for the B2000. And I got to deliver a check for the A71000. I got to deliver four checks for over $110,000 of coverage. I got to deliver $110,000 to the same woman. 21 years old, that's all she wants. And that forever changed me in this business because I knew I had a responsibility. I knew that it was meant to be. I knew I didn't have a choice anymore to see 20 people a week or not. Because what I was doing was a lot bigger than me. I was in that home that night with three chickens in my car and she gave me a $40 check and she only expected $1,000 for that. Think about that responsibility that I live with every day. Let me share this with you. That's a responsibility that each of you live with. Now I'm talking to your heart right now but you live with that every single day. These people sent in a card and you were the one that was chosen to go out there. And if you don't think it was meant to be, then you're in the wrong business.